This is what disruption of an established industry looks like. That used car you found online, it's here. Soaked, safety and secure, and a warehouse ready to go. Crank a few levers, and it's loaded up and on the highway. And before you know it, the car you so carefully chose has been delivered to your door. Here's your brand new used car. Haley Reap never visited a used car lot, never even had to leave their house. It, it was a little weird, but honestly, like, it's so convenient. I could just come home from work and know that my car was arriving later that day. Now, take a breath. The used car industry hasn't gone fully online yet. In fact, only 2% of Canadian consumers want a fully virtual experience when buying their next car. But that number is being driven up by younger consumers, like Erica Weber. It's really hard to be in the woods and live in the woods without a car. <laughs> She's a 33-year-old from Toronto who no longer wants to be from Toronto. She realized during the pandemic what was important to her, namely distancing herself from the urban sprawl so she can get closer to the bike trails and nature walks she loves. A car, as she sees it, is her ticket out of town. And the more I traveled within Ontario, I realized there was so much more to see and so many more adventures to be had, and that meant that I would need to go further. My emotions have kind of been all over the place. You know, sometimes I get really excited and I get really enthusiastic, and I love the idea of having the freedom and having my own car, and then sometimes I wonder if I'm going to find it, and I wonder if I'm going to end up with something that I really do like. She admits the car world isn't her world, which is why she's enlisted Nick Dasko, the car nerd. It's not a dig, it's his business name. Nick helps pick the cherries from the lemons. We're looking at about 10 to 12K. By having a smaller budget, it's, uh, it definitely comes with, you know, a shorter list. How short? With the average price of a used car going up 48% in the last year to $35,000 and counting, they're finding a whole lot of lemons. It is definitely more of a challenge because it has required people to spend more money on cars that used to be dramatically cheaper. In the past 12 months, I've had experiences where I'm seeing cars priced for close to, if not more than they cost brand new, and these are now three years old. A Wolverine attacked the driver's seat. It's over 15 years old, and you need an appraisal for it. I straight up don't trust this dealership. This car needs a new front seat. It could be worth a look, but that's sort of what $6,800 seems to get you yeah. these days. It's not just Nick the nerd. Mark McMullen is a maven. He's with Mark Wilson's Better Used Cars in Guelph, Ontario, and he's just as baffled. Since, well, the advent of automobiles themselves, most used cars went downhill in value. Well, no more. We had a truck that we were all worried about. It was like March uh, 2020, we're going into lockdown. It was a Dodge Ram 2500. McMullen sold that pickup for $41,900. The guy who bought it put 80,000 kilometers on the odometer and then sold it back to McMullen for $44,000. It doesn't add up, right? Well, McMullen put it back on his lot for $46,900, yet when another dealer called to buy it, he said no, because he needed the inventory for his customers. But when the dealer offered $50,000, McMullen sold the truck yet again. I keep saying this is historical, like this has never happened. Never could you buy a vehicle and drive it, and it actually appreciates. Despite all this, the appetite for cars remains insatiable. There are estimated to be roughly 2 million consumers in North America who are now in the market to buy a new vehicle. Right now, demand is very strong and pent-up demand is even stronger. Scotiabank auto sector analyst Rebecca Young says, on average, Canadians have saved an extra $8,000 since early 2020, money the auto industry desperately wants. But the dealers have a huge problem. It's taking them months to fulfill new vehicle orders because they have so few cars on their lots. 
What I think, though, is interesting and anecdotal is that we now are seeing frequently the term that I ordered a vehicle. Pre-pandemic, that was unheard of. People didn't say I ordered a vehicle. They would say I purchased a vehicle. Earlier in the pandemic, manufacturers could point to a worldwide microchip shortage for the decrease in car production, which was made worse with the supply chain crisis. And then, if you take the shortage of new cars and apply it to the larger auto food chain, it stands to reason the used car sector will feel the pinch as well. Used car dealers get the bulk of their inventory from two main sources, rental companies and leases. Rental companies are constantly refreshing their inventory, but with so few new vehicles coming in, they're holding on to their older cars. The same reasoning applies to drivers with leases. And when the lease comes due, that vehicle then enters the secondhand market. What we've seen, though, is because those, uh, when those leases come up, there's no new vehicle to put them into. And so you see lease extensions going on right now. Back to the manufacturing issues, goods are no longer moving around the world the way they used to. So Young says ramping up production isn't the solution. Even if auto manufacturers operate at full speed, operate at three shifts per day, seven days a week, and don't have downtimes, they still won't be able to fully make up for that lost demand or that pent up demand over the course of 2022. Change is inevitable, of course. Car sales are no longer so formal. Yet the basics of shopping at a car lot have changed little over the years. But pandemics, as we've learned, have a way of forcing even the most resolute to adapt. During the beginning of the pandemic, necessity is the mother of invention. So McMullen turned to online sales and ramped up delivering cars from the lot to his customers' front doors. The response was so positive that he's now fully committed to developing a new business model. Ultimately, he doesn't see consumers walking away from the in-person experience so he's creating a system where a robust online presence complements the existing business. If McMullen is an agent of change, Dan Park is more of a disruptor. The common thread across all our consumers is that they want just an easier, better way to buy a car. At some point, as we continue he's the CEO of Clutch, a Canadian used car vendor that operates entirely online, similar to Carvana and Vroom in the U.S., Clutch's success, he says, is tied to its growing reputation. If you look at other industries, you know, the hotel industry, the taxi industry, even dating, you know, I think even the concept of online dating was a little bit foreign. Is it easier to say date a Mercedes versus date this person? <laughs> I, I think so. I mean, you've got a 10-day money-back guarantee. That's not always true in the, in, in the dating world. Perhaps taking a page from dating apps, Clutch puts mountains of information online about every car they sell. They fix what's broken and offer a 360-degree tour of the car, all in an effort to be transparent. With thousands of high-quality cars to choose from. Park is all in on Clutch's future. He signed a deal to become the official used car partner of the NHL and is on track to deliver almost anywhere in Canada. We were, you know, selling hundreds back then, and now we're, you know, well into the thousands per year. Um, and so we've grown, you know, almost 10x. Um, over the last couple of years. And what's the goal? I mean, for us, the goal is to be the, the most trusted uh, provider of used vehicles in the country. Because of McMullen and startups like Clutch, consumers have never had more choice without leaving home. But there's little any dealer can do to meet the demand that exists in the market. Prices are high, supply is low, leaving Erica Weber still looking for her dream car. It's been a struggle. She's not giving up, but economists don't foresee a correction in prices until 2023, at the earliest. It's already been a long journey, and I feel like the road is a little bit longer. I wish I was a bit more optimistic and hopeful about finding something sooner, and hopefully we'll get there. Fingers crossed.